um, um, hi uh, everyone um, uh, I hope uh, you all will be fine and doing well um, my name is Saddam Hussein um, PhD scholar Department of Archaeology University of Peshawar and um, today I am here with another uh, video lecture which is on the punch mark coins of South Asia and um, in this um, talk we will talk about the punch mark coins and and their significance and other important features. Um, so a punch mark coin they are considered as the uh, most abundant coinage of, of, of South Asia and uh, the problem of these coins that is one of the most difficult topic in the Indian series coinage. Uh, these coins are crude and ugly and uh, they bear no um, true or proper legend so therefore we are um, unable to dare them precisely for a particular stage or area um, um, or locality so the early coins um, I mean the punchma coins as described um, they were issued without legend and uh, which create difficulty to assign them to um, any particular stage of production of a particular area and, and these coins they were produced in different states um, of, for monetary transactions um, therefore their circulation was merely confined to to certain territories uh, and the number of symbols like the reptile human figure trees peacocks sex arm symbol um, arch tail fish birds etc they obviously revealed different production of coins circulated um, in a particular area though with these coins they have uh, uh, many problems yet um, they possess special interest of numismatists, art historians, anthropologists um, and other uh, how uh, it was termed or why it was termed um, Panchma coins or how the name was given to it so uh, it is um, because of the uh, punching technique that, that these coins were given the name um, punch my coins um, and 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 these coins they are um, locally developed in Pakistan and they, they in ancient time they were locally developed in Pakistan India and its neighboring countries so the term uh, adopted uh, for these coins that was uh, uh, because of the manufacturing technique uh, of these coins and in ancient times um, we have noticed three kind of um, coins manufacturing technique techniques uh, such as the punch mark coin technique, punch mark technique, uh, die struck technique, and uh, casting techniques. So, um, in the punch mark technique, various punches they were applied to the blank uh, surface of a coin, and uh, these punches they were separately um, applied uh, by different hands and at different times. And and the per the punches on these coins they were put um, separately and. Uh, no single die was involved in the in the punching um, and the stamping or punching of of the symbols on these coins, and uh, uh, the, the the punches they um, were separately applied at at various points, and uh, naturally um, these symbols they this made they were uh, sometimes found they are sometimes found overstruck, and in some kind in some cases they they are were very much confused as, as they represent a confused jumble or, or they are uh, like uh, like a, 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 a zigzag or a, a wire that is uh, uh, confusing uh, very much uh, so like like a um, um, rolling metallic wire so metallic and uh, middle and shape um, these coins they were usually um, they were usually made of silver and uh, some were also struck in copper and uh, gold as well however uh, there is no such evidence of gold coins um, in this series and and the main currency they appeared in silver and uh, it was uh, struck in, in different in different shapes and um, they were issued from different places and the oblong coins, um, I mean in shapes, the oblong coins of a punch mark series, um, they were normally struck in the eastern region uh, and, and, and the heavy bend bar um, is assumed that they, they were found, uh, they were uh, minted in, in, in Ganthara region and uh, besides the heavy bend bar, small round coins they also appeared in the um, Ganthara locality and 
and, and different kinds of symbols they were um, used on these coins so uh, according to Theobald these, these, these symbols they are known to have been stamped by different people and um, um, as a general rule um, each coin of this series uh, usually um, comprises a group of five symbols on the front side and um, some of these symbols they were constantly used while um, the remaining the symbols they often changed and uh, uh, they are sometimes framed into, into different groups. Uh, um, in addition, uh, some miniature symbols of the same category also appeared on the back side of these coins and uh, these symbols they are associated to flora and fauna are um, some like an, an geometrical shapes and some symbols they have been uh, taken from the celestial phenomena and there are no di diagnostic features on these on the reverse of these kinds and uh, the reverse side um, 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 where symbols uh, um, are not much certain as compared to the obverse symbols and um, the reverse symbol on these coins they are also uh, generally um, they are uh, minute in size uh, as compared to those of the uh, obverse symbols and and they are punched um, least deep uh, um, as compared to obverse symbol and um, some of the symbols on the obverse side they are often found on the reverse side as well and the commonest symbols um, one of the um, the, the, the common symbols found on these coins um, they are the sun uh, symbol, six arms symbol and reptiles, the human figures um, the human figures they are thought to appear on these coins in the later um, series and a tree, is peacock, arched hill, a three arched hill with uh, crescent, fish, birds, dog, bull, elephant dog on five arched hill, um, the bull on five arched hill arched hill, goat, fish, snake, scorpion, a tree and railing which is um, a Buddhist, um, considered as a Buddhist symbol and Torian, Caduceus and um, the footprints etc. And, and the number of these symbols um, they, they sometimes attract the attention of anthropologists, art historians and numismatists. Um, accordingly these symbols they are related to ancient religions, um, ancient mythology and, and astronomy and at greater extent um, these symbols they characterize um, religious beliefs, uh, mythological, traditional practices and, and, and auspicious elements existed in different um, societies of, of the ancient India and um, they also reveal the socio-cultural conditions of the uh, ancient people uh, of different areas and these coins they, they were produced in divergent states for, for monetary values. Consequently, um, their circulation that was uh, merely confined to, to certain territories. Um, so, who issued um, such kind of coins? Uh, according to the Buddhist uh, literature, um, Anguthara Nikaya, there were 16 Mah Mahajanapadas in ancient India um, who minted their own coins. And in this series, uh, I mean the series issued by Janapadas that is, that is called the uh, Janapada uh, coins uh, Janapada series of Panchma coins and uh, each Maha Janapada um, they, they applied uh, some peculiar symbols um, according to their own uh, uh, tradition and, and their need and, and, and the names of these um, uh, 16 Janapada they are mentioned here and starting from Magadha Maha Janapada Kandhara Magajanapada, Kashi Mahajanapada, and the rest of the Janapadas, the, the names of the rest of the Janapadas, they are, they are mentioned they, 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 here. And this is a map uh, which shows the 16 uh, Janapadas in, in their respective localities. Uh, according um, I'm, the, the debate of these coins, um, uh, there are different um, opinion of, of different scholars and uh, and the word is uh, suggested to be indicated by um, uh, a seed uh, named as Raktika. Uh, it is a uh, normally arid uh, seed and uh, having black seed, uh, spots um, at, at one end. Uh, the Indian system of weight that was uh, based on the um, Karshapana, Dhrana or Purana is mentioned in the early uh, accounts of, of India and uh, 
they were weighed uh, 32 rattis or rakti, raktikas and the raktika or modern uh, ratti that is uh, the name of a seed or it is derived from from a seed and its scientific name is Aberus picatorius um, it is a hard seed and uh, with a plague spot at one end um, and and here is the picture of the um, gunjberry um, a local term for this used use for the seed or um, Aberus picatorius uh, so so this is the picture of the seed um, and it is uh, um, extremely difficult to find any two seeds um, of, of identical weight. Um, some scholars they have tried to uh, find out the actual weight of a seed generally depending upon the average weight of about 100 chosen specimens but the, the results acquired from these specimens um, um, they, are, they are not uniform. Um, however, according to the Winston Arthur Smith, uh, Directica weighs about 1.825 grains. And Alexander Cunningham, he determined the, the standard weight for one rati uh, is 1.82 grains, or a bit less than um, the weight estimated by um, Winston Smith. Um, so Cunningham, he estimated the weight of uh, um, Karshapanas are uh, is 58.56 grains, or 3.5 um 70 uh, grams and and this is now considered as the um, standard weight um for for these coins um and apart from this there are um some scholars who try to find out um, um the weight of these coins and um uh, of these the average weight obtained by sir um uh, Elliot, that was uh, 47.10 grains and Edward Thomas he acquired 47.69 and E.J. Walsh um, wash, uh, with, with little differences uh, he calculated uh, the weight for these coins as 47.82 uh, grains and uh, um, the, the punch mark coins they had um, different denominations uh, and 32 ratti that was the standard and the most popular one and uh, and other denomination um, uh, 64 rati, one and a half uh, rati and three quarter and half karshapana and um, quarter karshapana um, they were also used and and the corresponding weight of uh, of rati that is mentioned here and rati weight 0 0.182 gram uh, and carrot is 0 0.91 and one masha that was equal to eight rati and one thanka it was equal to four mashas and one tola uh, at equal to 12 masha and this one rati that is um, equal to um, um, and, and grams um, rati weighs 0 0.1216 and rati is uh, generally um, uh, a traditional unit of uh, mass measurement in India and uh, one rati that was earlier um, equal to 0 0.1 to 16 gram but now it is standardized and uh, um, uh, equal to 0 0.1125 grams um, diff there are different names um, mentioned in the ancient literature for these coins and such names are the Karshapanas, Dranas and Kahapana, Ardapana, Ashtabaga, and uh, Masaka, Arda Masaka, uh, Kakini, Arda Kakini, they were um, the names used in ancient literatures um, for these coins. And besides this, um, Nishka and Suvarna, they were also used, um, especially for the gold currency and for some kind of uh, jewelry. Uh, but no such um, um, currency, I mean Nishka or Sugarna, they have been found so far. Um, and, 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 and these names, they are um, mostly known for weight and denomination of, of these coins and, and sometimes also used for jewelry. Uh, the literal mean, meaning of uh, Karshapana, that is uh, uh, Karsha, which means um, a custom, a weight, or a market, and, and the Karshapana coins, they were thus um, issued and, and three metals um, gold silver and copper to so the gold uh, coins they are uh, yet to be um, found 
um, in classification um, um, various attempts in the past uh, have been made, made to classify these coins and um, uh, Mr. Tubalt he on the basis of um, his own findings he illustrated and interpreted the symbols um, depicted on these punch mark coins and he regarded these symbols as uh, um, Shaivite, Buddhist or terrestrial and um, other they associated uh, to the Aryan mythology uh, however what is the case we don't know for sure uh, but the classification made by Mr. Tubalt that is uh, uh, here so he divided uh, these coins into six um, different groups or headings and the, the names or the groups um, he, he named are here human figures um, um, on the on the basis of the human figure he classified these coins on the basis of implements animals trees branches and fruits and solar or Shivite symbols and um, miscellaneous symbols so so this is the general classification made by mr tubalt um, in the late um, 18th 19th century for these coins and after that he alleged that the, the average number of symbols on the obverse they are five and the reverse um, side normally bears two symbols uh, which are less distinct as compared to the um, obverse symbols and, and are also found smaller. After that, um, Pameshwari Lal Gupta he classi also classified these coins um, um, with uh, T. R. Hardaker and, and, and the work of these scholars, uh, the, the, these two scholars that is. Uh, considered um, the more that is the most frequent um, source used for the classification of punch mark coins and they divided um, the coins uh, into seven um, different series and um, this classification was based on various characteristic features um, in this regard the coins of series one they, they range in size from 35 to 22 mm um, and and they are the um, largest this is the largest series and number of types and um, however this is also uh, not very well known um, the coins they are easily identified by their large planes and early types they have stylistic link with the Prika Shepana coins and throughout the series the design and execution of the symbol that is primitive and and crude uh, banker marks they are um, often quite large on these on the reverse of these coins and uh, s occasionally um, on the overs. Uh, the sun rays depicted on these coins they are found in oblique um, form. Um, the series 2 ranges from uh, 28 to 19 mm and a um, small group of coins um, um, uh, I mean this group is known by a, a small group of coins and um, they are always restruck um, on the coins of series 1 and um, in choice of symbols, designs and, and the flan size um, this series is transitional um, between the series 1 and series 3 and these coins are easily detec detected um, by the presence of official marks uh, on both sides and um, these marks together with the banker marks they are often um, um, make um, complexity um, and their identification and the sun rays depicted here they are um, radial is um, and in series 3 um, the size range from 26 to 18 mm and uh, some coins they are re-strike on those of uh, series 2 uh, most types um, which re-strike um, series 2 uh, they were also issued and fresh metal uh, I mean new metal were used uh, for these coins um, um, and and by this time the uh, current symbols they were sun elephant or bull and they, they become um, standardized uh, and, and design um, combined with the very distinctive class and group marks um, such as uh, uh, dog and taurines and palm trees um, and sometimes rhinoceros they also occurred combinedly um, with those of uh, sun elephant or bull and uh, these coins they have medium flames um, the uh, size of which is shown here 
and the start of uh, series 3 and uh, series 4 uh, the size of uh, the flan of these coins that is from 22 to 18 and the coins of this group they are of considered to be of uh, intermediate size and they have a sun symbol um, and and with with radial rays um the class marks they often uh, um they bear uh, some aspect of arches which uh, numbers from three to five are sometimes six and um the uh, this is further divided into four parts um number one the restrike um series two coins uh, but with arches and the class mark and number two um, from here the restrike restrikes um they they were earlier types terminate and there is no such arch in the class mark uh, coins uh, which appear with arches uh, is a class mark uh, but still they they do not bear miniature marks and those coins which have arches is a class mark but with miniature marks on the reverse side and it is a lengthy and and sub series uh, which contain many uh, common types and um, they are also of uh, um, good workman good uh, workmanship um, the coins of a uh, series 5 they range in size from 18 to um, 11 mm and um, the, the, the coins of the series they are uh, small in size they have uh, um, radial sun uh, symbol and uh, sometimes Morian symbols are also depicted on this series of coins and um, uh, these coins they are always without um, arches or arches and crescents is uh, uh, class marks um, silver coins um, in this series they are sometimes debased and the bearing crumb marks uh, on these coins they also become fever um, um, on the reverse side and, and, and virtually um, they disappear from the obverse and the two uh, sub series they are coins with bold river marks reverse marks with the uh, miniature marks and those coins which have bold um, reverse marks but debasements they start uh, from here in, in silver and the series 6 um, and, and the, the, the size of the plane of these coins um, that is mentioned here and now this is the uh, last series of the punch mark coins uh, the details of this series they are um, uh, that this is a small series of coins uh, as distinguished by the lack of sun and sixth arm symbol and they are replaced by other marks um, this the small size bold reverse marks and um, um, symbols links uh, indicate that they were contemporary with the series 6 or 6b and and, and an interesting feature they are of these coins that is the use of a group of three human figures uh, appear on these coins and uh, such coins uh, however they are not all rare and and no use of uh, some symbol that is um, um, seen here on on these coins so um, who issued um, the punch mark coins are in which particular um, period these coins they were um, issued is still uh, a question to be uh, to be uh, answered um, however here is a brief introduction of the coinage and and india um, the the origin um, of the indian coinage that is um, um, hidden in the mystery of time and it is a very complicated uh, topic to pinpoint to a, cer a certain or a particular period um, however it is uh, generally believed that the uh, coinage of India they develop independently from from the coins of Lydia and and China. Um, however, the coinage of Lydia that was struck irregular in shape, and um, they they were all are bean in shape, and uh, as com uh, as compared to the punch mark coins which were found in in rectangular, oblong um, squares and and uh, other um, such shapes and and the metal used for the um, Lydian coin that was electrum which was an alloy of gold and and copper and um, then simply punched um, in the center under the king 
um, and his son um, Croesus. Uh, a, a straight line uh, can be seen between the king and, and his son um, Croesus on the coins um, issued in, in Lydia earlier and um, accordingly um, the, the China they had uh, introduced um, uh, the cast coins and drones and they were in the shape of knives um, keys and, and spades and initially um, its uh, most famous cast coins um, they were they were in, in round shape and um, having a hole in the center so against this um, the coinage in India uh, they introduced uh, uh, in the form of a punched mark and, and they were unique and um, uh, without uh, any features as discussed above so as um, the, the coinage of uh, um, India is regarded, um, here is the theories um, about the origin of uh, punch mark coins and, and these are the um, earliest coins of uh, um, South Asia or India as compared, um, as considered by the um, uh, renowned numismatists in the modern days. Um, as I discussed that the Panchmar coins they are considered as the earliest um, um, coinage of um, India uh, however there are uh, still some questions and, and these questions, questions they are um, from the last two decades that uh, whether these coins they originate um, uh, locally uh, or um, the area that was borrowed from um, foreign countries I mean um, from where the Indian they learned the technique of uh, making coins and um, how the punch mark coins they were um, um, issued. So there are different theories um, regarding the um, 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 origin of punch mark coins and, and these theories they are divided into two groups. Um, number one there is the indigenous theory um, uh, and it includes those scholars who consider the origin of punch mark uh, as an, an indigenous act and and the second one there is um, those scholars who consider that the punch mark coins are the idea of uh, making punch mark coins they were brought um, um, by the foreigners um, those scholars who support its its foreign origin um, theory they are of the view that the invention of coinage in India there was um, uh, not known to Indians and, and, and these Indians they learned the art of making coins from um, from the Greek people, from the Persians or uh, Babylonians and um, the Babylonian theory that was proposed by J. A. Decaux de Manchi and um, he considered that the silver and copper coins of the Panchmark series they are simply an Indian variety of the Persian or Armenian coinage uh, James Princip, on the other hand, um, um, and um, Horace Wilson, they were the pioneer. To uh, they were the pioneer in the field of numismatics, and they thought that the idea of um, issuing coins um, that was learned by the Indians um, from the from the Greek rule, and and, and they are of the view um, that the earliest coins of uh, India. Um, they chiefly consisted of lumps of gold and silver and uh, they, they don't have any impression, um, impression or symbols um, uh, until these people they learned um, the usefulness of money from the uh, Bactrian neighbors. Uh, so later on Princip he modified his views and admitted that the Indians they had um, an indigenous currency but um, he stick to his um, old um, views and, and believe that uh, the die devices um, used for punch mark coins they were learned from the um, Greek uh, people. And Vincent um, Arthur Smith he agreed with James Pensip and um, Horace Wilson um, uh, that uh, these coins they were um, uh, learned uh, the technique of um, issuing punch mark coins that was learned by the Indian from their Greek navels. John Allen, he on the other hand has different opinion um, and believed that there was no connection between the Indo-Greek coins and um, the, the punch mark coins. Um, and, and Jay Kennedy, um, he, he, was, he placed the beginning of uh, coinage uh, in India 
slightly um, earlier than than the date considered by the um, um, uh, above mentioned scholars and in this regard he he um, he was of the view that the benchmark coins um, which formed the earliest uh, series of coins of India they were copied from the Babylonian shekel uh, when the uh, maritime maritime trade that was um, open between the two um, um, regions um, besides these um, uh, a number of scholars uh, um, who, who they, they, they did not the foreign origin theory of uh, Indian coins um, so of these um, E. J. Epson he thought that the benchmark coins they were developed independently and without any um, uh, foreign influence and Edward Thomas later on he also supported the views of uh, E. J. Epson uh, he observed the design treatment and die devices of, of the benchmark coins and suggested that the uh, Indian people they followed the ideal model of um, their own country and um, there is no evidence of conventionalized Greek art um, on these coins. Um, Alexander Cunningham on the other hand he, he said that the benchmark coins they were certainly um, they were certainly um, current in the time of after the uh, Gautama Buddha uh, which means 5th or 6th century BC and um, he further observed um, the that the benchmark coins they may go um, back and date as for as um, 1000 um, BC um, amongst the Indian numismatists um, S K Chakraborty Chak Chakraborty um, uh, um, he he inclined to the views of uh, Alexander Cunningham. Um, however, Dr. Bandarkar he um, places the origin of uh, uh, coins in India much earlier than um, these dates. Uh, whatever the dispute um, uh, may be, uh, but um, it is true that the topic is not resolved yet and um, um, we, we shall therefore um, examine um, um, different Um, theories um, regarding the origin of the um, earliest coinage and in the Indian um, subcontinent. Um, however, a separate will you will uh, will be made on on these um, theories, um, which probably suggest that the um, uh, Panchmar coins they were originated um, uh, following the traditions of um, Greeks, Persians, and Babylonian um, shekel. Uh, so um, a separate video lecture will be um, prepared on this um, topic um, uh, soon. Uh, um, the, the initially, um, uh, it was uh, considered that uh, the benchmark coins they were issued by merchants, and then the art was officially developed by different states uh, for their monetary needs. Um, and uh, after these states, um, the uh, tradition was shifted, uh, shifted to the imperial period and, and that imperial period um, is considered as the uh, Mauryan period in which the punchmark coins they were issued in uniform um, um, they, they were uniformly issued in, in square shape and uh, through the Indian uh, subcontinents these coins um, they are found uh, from Kabul Valley and the west to the uh, um, uh, Bangladesh and the East and and the early coins they are um, assigned to local states and later in later on um, the idea was uh, uh, transformed to the imperial government um, in the Mauryan period and there is nothing uh, on the basis of which we clearly suggest that the benchmark coins were issued um, uh, by the state or by private individuals and um, uh, besides the royal mints, um, um, there were other bodies. Um, they were also engaged in the um, issuance of um, coinage. Um, they were authorized, and and those authorities, um, they may have been the communities or a group of uh, villages, um, or tribes, clans, or um, janapadas, or the self-governor um, provinces are um, guilds of merchants or towns. 
Um, so we we don't have a clear evidences on the basis of which we reach our conclusion that who issued um, such type of coins. In fact, there are um, some literary evidences uh, which suggest that most of the coins in ancient India they were issued by the um, wealthy merchants. And in this regard, the um, Buddha Gosha, um, a celebrated Buddhist monk or scholar of the 5th century AD, um, he narrates in his book that how a manier goldsmith, he after um, carefully scrutinized uh, a number of Karshapanas and then determined the village, town, mountain, um, a riverside where a coin was minted. And also the, the, the master goldsmith who was responsible um, for the manufacturing of, of coins. And, and the term Karshapana in Indian literature um, appeared to be used for a metal uh, as well as um, um, for coins in the historic period. And in the light of um, evidences, um, the introduction of the Karshapana coinage um, that must be attributed to the beginning of the um, second millennium BC. And in this regard, um, Alexander Cunningham, who disposed uh, to date these coins as early as um, 1000 BC and um, Winston Smith he thought that uh, this estimate um, that, that that is to be too cert certainly much in excess of the truth um, because um, his mind was obsessed with the idea that uh, the coinage began with the Lydians uh, around 700 BC and um, that consequently there could be no um, coined uh, money in India prior to the um, 7th century, 700 um, century um, BC. And Mr. Bandarkar, he, he regards that the coinage of India must um, be dated from the prehistoric uh, period. And Mr. Joe Hib, um, he has recently suggested the date for the origin of uh, the Panchmar coins is 5th and 4th century AD. Um, in spite of the numismatic and anthropological interest, um, the Panchmar coin is still a question mark for the numismatist and for the world of archaeology. And in spite of various attempts um, made in the past, um, the question is still um, remained unsolved that who and when these coins and uh, they, they, they were um, issued. Um, among um, the Panchmar coins, there is a series of coins which are mainly known in um, rectangular shape and, and, and silver matter. And, and this series is considered to be um, the oldest in the Panchmark um, series. And um, these coins are mostly um, known in uh, bend shape and, and they bear um, two obverse marks um, impressed on each side of the um, 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 of, of the uh, of the over side of this um, uh, bent bar and uh, in the center of that uh, bar appeared um, um, another mark which is considered to be the counter mark and and the reverse side of this coin that is left um, uh, blank uh, however small marks um, they also they, they, they appeared on these coins And, and the estimated weight of these um, silver um, um, bent bar coins um, they ranged between uh, 172.4 uh, to 179.4 um, grains and, and the size reaches um, from 1.25 to um, 2 inches. Um, besides this uh, heavyweight coins um, there are two examples which are known um, um, and, 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 and the weight of um, 43.5 and 38.5 grains and, and they bear the same marks as appeared on the um, long bent bar um, uh, coins and since these um, coins they are mostly recovered from Texela so uh, here for um, a, a general uh, term is coined for these coins is um, silver bent bar coins of um, Texela um, and now um, I would like to show you um, some pictures of the uh, Panchmar coins. So um, here you can see the coins of um, Panchmar series, uh, and and these coins they were um, known in in Gandhara, Janapada, 
and these are the pictures of the um, silver um, bent bars of, of Texera. So the, the, the two um, marks um, at each end of the bent bar um, uh, that, that it's the main symbol and in the center is uh, mini, mini mini miniature marks which um, characterize uh, to be appeared as a counter marks and uh, the reverse you can see here uh, that it's left blank without any symbol and in some cases small mi miniature uh, marks also appeared on the sides um, and they, they seems to be concave um, here um, you might see in the picture that uh, they are um, slightly concave um, from the over side and and this is a coin of the Vidarbha Janapada uh, which was um, um, acquired from the internet and uh, the coins of other um, Janapada they, they are also available um, in, in large number um, uh, the pictures of these coins are available in large number on on internet so you can see um, in, in details you know, there and and these are the coins of the um, Magadha uh, Mahajanapada and this is the upward side characterized by um, four or five uh, marks mainly four are known and, and the reverse um, is sometimes um, left blank or with uh, small uh, marks these two coins they are uh, not published and and they are the part of a hoard and will be available to uh, the readers um, soon in the form of a research paper and uh, they, they they were they belong to the uh, gandhara mahajanapada uh, these are unpublished so that's why i can't show you um, more pictures of of uh, the coins of the gandhara uh, mahajanapada so that's the first example and this is the set, second example of the of the hoard. There are also some coins um, in this hoard um, which depicts um, symbols not appeared earlier. Um, um, uh, symbols which are not reported earlier or do not appear um, appeared earlier on, on the punch mark coins especially of the um, Gandhara Mahajanapada. Um, thank you very much for uh, listening to this video and and this is um, actually the part of uh, um, a lecture series um, started by professor dr uh, Muhammad Naeem Kazi from the Department of Archaeology University of Peshawar Pakistan and uh, I thank him for um, providing me the opportunity to to make a video on the Pajmar coins and uh, uh, this is uh, these these lectures they they are um, in fact very much useful for those um, who are learning coins or uh, learning the archaeology um, especially um, for the students of uh, Pakistan and also for those who are interested in archaeology um, and and also in uh, ancient um, coins.